Hi everyone, I'm Luca Merimin. Uh, I'm a lecturer in aquatic ecology in Galway Mayo Institute of Technology in Galway in Ireland. Um, and today I'm going to share uh, our experience uh, with using a microfluidic high throughput quantitative PCR system uh, adapted to uh, the monitoring and surveillance of aquatic species. Uh, some of this work is um, Dennis van der Porkran PhD uh, project, um, and I, I am grateful to him for a lot of, of the work that I will present today. So microfluidics refers to technologies that enable the control and manipulation of fluids at very small scales, like nan micron to nano to picoliters. They are generally cost and time effective uh, because of rapid heat transfer and reduced sample and reagent consumption. They also enable integration of different steps into a single device, such as sample preparation, target arrangement, amplification, and detection. Um, and they've been extremely attractive uh, to point of care applications, uh, such as the lab on a chip uh, concept. Within the context of environmental DNA, um, the, there's been an increased use of digital uh, PCR uh, in targeted species specific detection, uh, but in recent times also the use of high throughput qPCR platforms uh, enabled by microfluidics uh, has started to emerge. Yeah. So micro, microfluidics uh, has uh, enabled a whole range of different approaches uh, within the context of nucleic acid amplification and detection. Some uh, PCR-based uh, devices can be space domain, meaning that the fluids go through different areas at different temperatures, enabling PCR. Others are called time domain PCR devices, where the, the fluids uh, are injected into a compartment and then temperature changes within that compartment, which is the same approach as most thermocyclers, except that the volumes here are much smaller. And isothermal nucleic acid amplification, for instance, has enabled the development of disposable units uh, at single temperature that can uh, are, are particularly attracted to point of care, and obviously digital PCR. These technologies have been uh, implemented in a number of commercially available instruments, uh, and these are just some examples of them. But the one I want to focus on today is the Biomark HD platform by Fluida. This is a high throughput microfluidic PCR system capable of gene expression, SNP genotyping, digital PCR, among a whole range of other applications within the one system. It's cost effective, it's scalable in terms of throughput, uh, and uh, there is a reduced hands on time because a lot of the mixing of the fluids happens thanks to these uh, controllers. And these are the integrated fluidic controls, which are the units where the magic happens. So let's have a look. Um, generally, uh, samples are loaded onto one side, assay reagents are loaded on the other side, and then with those controllers uh, and pressure, the fluids are injected into uh, microfluidic chambers, uh, which or happen to be here in the central part of the IFC. And in the, one, the example we are seeing here, this is a 9696, which means that in this center part uh, section of the, of the IFC, we have 9,216 independent reactions taking place, which means that each of these samples is queried by all of the 96 assay at any given time. So it's not a multiplex, except for the preamp, as we will see, uh, that happens. But when the QPCR happens here, it's actually a parallel reaction, not a multiplex. Another attractive aspect of this platform is that the assays are not pre-spotted or, or bound to the, the area of the IFC here, but rather they can be customized before any run uh, and we can replicate or we can have uh, many different assays uh, and so forth. So there's a lot of flexibility, which makes it particularly attractive to application in environmental DNA. So there is a number of uh, throughput formats, including a 37K uh, digital um, chip. The workflow uh, it then generally includes a pre-amplification step, then loading onto the FC, and then qPCR real-time happens. It can be also be endpoint, but the system is particularly useful for real-time. And um, we can have uh, Tachman probe chemistry approaches or uh, cyber uh, intercalating uh, dye chemistry, such as cyber uh, green, which enables high-resolution melt analysis. Just to give you an idea of the throughput of the system, Running a 96 by 96 IFC, so a single run, is equivalent to running 96 96 well plates uh, on a, a conventional qPCR machine. 
or in other words, 24, 384 well plates. So imagine the amount of pipetting that is saved. Imagine the amount of reagents, including template eDNA, that is saved by testing against all this assay in a single run. So to illustrate the application uh, on a real case study um, of this platform, I want to talk about a project I've been coordinating for the last couple of years. Um, the goal of this is to monitor commercial bivalve and crustacean larvae and environmental plankton samples in need of sustainable effective aquaculture and fisheries practices. So in, essentially here, we, don't, we are not interested in that fraction of eDNA that is present from the adult population uh, in, the, in, in, in the water column, uh, but we're more uh, interested in detecting larvae and uh, monitoring spawning events. In order to address that, objective one uh, of this was to develop a panel of assays using our system, and objective two was to screen a time series of samples uh, using a nationwide sampling program uh, in a way, a citizen-like approach at the national scale. So for our first objective, uh, these are the species that we were interested in, uh, or some of them, uh, the list is longer. Uh, but as you can see, it involves a number of commercial bivalve species, such as mussels and oysters, and also actually important and ecologically important um, crustaceans, mostly uh, decapods, um, and here including crabs, lobsters, and prawns. So the, the initial phase is the marker selection, of course, and in silico validation, uh, where we looked at uh, existing markers and designed new ones, tested both cyber, uh, cyber green and TACMAN assays uh, for a range of markers, including two uh, universal crustacean bival larvae to, to be used as field pest positive controls, and also a number of synthetic uh, internal positive controls. Uh, um, because of the throughput of the system, we could include uh, as many as four internal policy controls at different concentrations uh, to see the potential effects of inhibition uh, at different concentrations. Um, just another example of the flexibility that, that, that enables this, um, these experiments by the platform. Um, on the first phase of the project, uh, we, start, we tested 22 assays, new and existing, and 11 of which could be validated in a relatively short period of time. Uh, and now we have learned a lot from that step. Uh, we are about to embark on testing 70 more assays. As for uh, the PCR optimization sensitivity, we focused a lot on inhibition control because uh, of the nature of the samples being plankton samples and large volume samples. Uh, and also we established in uh, a few runs limited detection, limited quantification of all the assays. So here are some examples of the experiments on humic acid, different concentrations, and EDTA at different concentrations. What I just want to point out here, we tested the protocol with and without BSA in the pre-amplification step, and we could see that there was uh, effect of inhibition without BSA at higher concentrations, uh, whereas BSA was uh, fairly stable uh, and no inhibition. Uh, so we recommend the inclusion of BSA uh, in the pre-amp step. Um, and um, we could learn, we learned much more from this experiment as well. Like for instance, the, the low volume chambers or reactions as a, a dilution effect on inhibitors, um, which is similar to what you'd expect for a digital PCR system. We also tested this, and this was confirmed when tested on 66 environmental samples. As for limited detection, it was comparable to, uh, it was comparable to uh, that of um, conventionally qPCR uh, eDNA assays developed. Uh, and although we did observe variation uh, in the efficiency of the assays, um, so we are working on that. As for high speci uh, assay specificity, uh, the, the high throughput enabled the testing of many markers at, at the same point at the same time against many different uh, target and non-target organisms as well as uh, mock communities using both genomic DNA and uh, synthetically derived uh, double-stranded uh, DNA. Here you see some example. You can see, for instance, a good assay, example of a good assay here that was amplifying only the organism uh, of interest. Uh, the numbers here are the, the melt curve uh, peak. Uh, and also here we can see serial dilution of the mock where that same target is mixed with all other species just to comp compare performance at the same concentration and a lower concentration and so forth, and I could go on and on, but it's really amazing what, what can be tested in a single run. And it's not just for one assay, this was done for a lot of assays at the same time. So this enables fast specificity testing and intercalating dye chemistry uh, coupled with 
high um, high resolution melting analysis is a very promising approach, even though generally the standard is uh, probe based uh, chemistry. OK, so then we took this initial panel that we developed and we tested against 242 plankton samples from 14 locations around the country, which were collected uh, almost every two weeks for two years um, by vertical plankton toes by known expert stakeholders uh, uh, and then shipped by post to GMIT, where we adopted an extraction protocol uh, modified from the power soil kit and we tested it using our um, our um, panel. So here is just a snapshot of, of, of the results. Uh, this is actually was the initial screening. Uh, the data are much more, and this is only a, a portion of a run. And so you can see a number of locations here, and for each location we have time series, number of species screened, and their presence absence as well as um, intensity of a DNA signal in each sample. So what we are working next uh, on to this is uh, essentially uh, try to discriminate when uh, there is background noise, if you like, of environmental DNA for the other population uh, and uh, spawning events. So we are validating this with microscopy and, and other methods. Um, OK, so this is the next steps on this project. We will increase also the number of markers. We will further validate the pipeline with barcoding of amplicos and high throughput sequencing. Uh, and then um, we are expanding this uh, also into biomass estimation, estimation and expanding also to surveillance of other uh, invasive alien species and toxic algal bloom and so forth. So to conclude, microfluidics and eDNA, uh, they are capable of enabling rapid and cost-effective development of targeted uh, eDNA assay panels. Uh, integration will lead to reduce contamination of risk, so many steps can be combined, so less, less pipetting allow fast turnaround time of screening of environmental samples, which is really important for EU regulation and, and, and other stakeholders to, to have results in short time. And then avoid fast depletion of valuable template DNA extract, because it looks it, it, with the same amount of uh, template you can, you, can, you can test many different assays. And then it could be implemented as, uh, for instance, uh, a QC step or validation step in metabarcoding pipelines, uh, and eventually is likely to lead to environmental point of care uh, devices. So thank you for listening. I want to thank you, the funding agency and all the stake, the, the stake, other stakeholders uh, involved in this, particularly BIM uh, and Dennis uh, for his work. And feel free to contact me anytime uh, by email uh, if you want to know more about this or um, want to reach out. Thank you.